I think it was in the, it's either in the Vedic text. I think they, they took, there was design mm. for a flying machine in the Vedic sure. text. Sure. Yeah. Vimanas. And, yeah. And they actually built it based on it in a, in a, in, a, in um, I don't know if it was a Berkeley or MIT. Somebody built the damn thing. Not, not wide, <laughs> not, not a life size, but a sure. small version based on it. And it worked. Well, it's always it been fascinating worked. to me because, you know, there, I, I believe it's one called the, um, Vimana Sastra, which was revealed to be not a complete hoax, but like an extremely shaky source that if it wasn't like planted as a hoax, it was definitely like somebody wrote it in probably early 1910s or 20s and said it was ancient, you know, Sanskrit. And it was sure. reviewed in the 60s. And somebody said, actually, this is not an authentic. But then the ones that have not been debunked, my favorite word, um, the ones that talk about like, like when you get into the Vimana, this is how you start the Mercury engine. And it's like, what? why would there be a manual for a flying machine in a temple in Sanskrit if they didn't have a need for that? Like there, there, there's no another. need for the manual in a myth. If it's a myth, you know, just like when people say, well, Plato's dialogues, um, you know, in the Timaeus and the Critias, the Atlantis parts of those are myth. And I say, okay, that's interesting because the first thing he says is, although this story may sound strange, Socrates, every word of it was true. And it's vouched for by Solon, the wisest of the seven sages. So he disclaims it's not a myth. And then if it were a myth, why would you need to describe like the stadia length of the canals, you know, why, right. why would you need that? If it's a myth, you know, like yeah, you don't just, see the details like that. It's like, he's describing a historical story. He tells you it's a historically well, true story. Solon yeah. was a real person who did visit Egypt, you know? And it's like, why are we debating what Plato said? Oh, because we've written hundreds of thousands of articles and textbooks already that say that humanity was in a hunter gathering state. Oh, don't get me started. Yeah, doing me started. nothing with yes. their, you know, walking on four legs in the, you know, savannas. And it's right. like, no. Yeah. And also, not... make, and also, and also constructing Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 exactly. Hunting, yeah. gathering, yeah. moving megalithic Hunting. objects. No big yeah. deal. Yeah. Carving things in with astronomical accuracy. Uh, sure. That makes all the sense in the world. Like, you, 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 come on. Like, you know, and I think now, though, I think even with conversations like this that are hitting the ether, uh, yeah. <laughs> they, um, they people are starting to just wake up and go, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense anymore. Even right. though you've been feeding us this for, for so many years, right? we're starting to think for ourselves here and just go, look, the evidence doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. That's where people no. like Graham Hancock are such, you know, yeah. such a blessing because at least he might not be right. But he's asking the questions as an investor. Well, and that's that's all I do in the book, you know. And I think that's why it has been so successful. Is I always loved that Hancock and the people that came, you know, before me in this field. The best ones never told you what to think. They just said, "Look, this is what we found." How how is there a map from fifteen thirteen that we found in a dusty palace in Istanbul that has a map of Antarctica before it was ever discovered just alone how do you explain that on its surface you know right. how do you explain like you said go back tepe you know which isn't a myth it's a archaeological site mm -hmm. that we know was at least you know around ten thousand bc it's like how do you describe that in the current paradigm of hunter gathering but I, I as i spend like a whole chapter on this exact problem and i bring up gobekli tepe because that really bothered me as a historian like why aren't we updating textbooks why isn't there a ancient history you know like prelude like i used to teach you know for the first month i would just teach these types of things like what do you think about this what do you think about you know evidence of a comet strike from J james kennett's research what do you think about that that's not channeled what do you think about this what do you think about the CIA and the DIA using channelers 
and then documenting their accuracy, you know, and then sending the FBI. by Yes, exactly. Sending the FBI to, I believe, uh, Ingo Swan's house when he discovered a secret program that he wasn't supposed to know about, you know. So it's like the government knows this is real. It's just very difficult to replicate. You know, only a handful of people can do it well, Um, just like a handful of channels had the opportunity in time to not be influenced by, say, Star Wars or the works of, you know, Graham Hancock. Because, again, I I wanted to show people you can't just say this kid watched Star Wars. There was no Star Wars in 1886. No television. There was no movies. There was no. You didn't have a light bulb. The, the, the first the first talkies enough talkies the first silent films weren't even they're just no. barely getting off the ground barely. yeah so i i really focused on that book because i was like i remember when i read it i thought okay this is probably from like the 50s or something i don't know right right and i looked at the preface i'm like wait what like when because the copy i had was published in 1947 or something and i was like but wait when was this written 1886 okay this i'm gonna have to spend time on this one you know to watch the full video click on the link below and don't forget to subscribe